The National Asset Management Agency is a body created by the Government of Ireland in late 2009, in response to the Irish financial crisis and the deflation of the Irish property bubble. NAMA functions as a bad bank, acquiring property development loans from Irish banks in return for government purple debts bonds, ostensibly with a view to improving the availability of credit in the Irish economy. The original book value of these loans was a 77 billion and the original asset values to which the loans related was a 88 bn with there being an average loan to value of 77% and the current market value is estimated at a 47 billion. NAMA is controversial, with politicians and some economists criticizing the approach, including Nobel Prize winning economist Joseph Stiglitz who has said that the Irish government is squandering public money with its plan to bail out the banks. One year after NAMA's establishment the Irish government was compelled for other but similar reasons to seek an European Union International Monetary Fund bailout in November 2010, the outcome of which will have considerable effects on NAMA's future operations. Background As a result of the collapse of the Irish property market, Irish banks have property development loan assets secured on property with a market value significantly below the amount owed. Many of the loans are now non-performing due to debtors experiencing acute financial difficulties. Both factors have led to a sharp drop in the value of these loan assets. If the banks were to recognize the true value of these loans on their balance sheets, they would no longer meet their statutory capital requirements. The banks therefore need to raise further capital but, given the uncertainty around the true value of their assets, their stock is in too little demand for a general share issuance to be a viable option. The banks are also suffering a liquidity crisis due, in part, to their lack of suitable collateral for European Central Bank repo loans. Along with their capital requirement problems, this is limiting the bank's ability to offer credit to their customers and, in turn, contributing to the lack of growth in the Irish economy. How NAMA works the National Asset Management Agency bill present format, covers the six financial institutions which are covered by the Irish government's deposit guarantee scheme. Those institutions are Bank of Ireland, Allied Irish Banks, Anglo-Irish Bank, EBS, Irish Life and Permanent and Irish Nationwide. Other institutions, such as Ulster Bank, which are not covered may choose to join the scheme. The Minister for Finance, Brian Leenan, said the banks would have to assume significant losses when the loans, largely made to property developers, are removed from their books. If such losses resulted in the banks needing more capital, then the government would insist on taking an equity stake in the lenders. Economist Peter Bacon, who was appointed by the government to advise on solutions to the banking crisis, said the new agency had potential to bring a better economic solution to the banking crisis and was preferable to nationalizing the banks. The assets will be purchased by using government bonds, which may lead to a significant increase in Ireland's gross national debt. The bill provides that NAMA will be established on a statutory basis, as a separate body corporate with its own board appointed by the Minister for Finance and with management services provided by the National Treasury Management Agency. The bill envisages that NAMA will arrange and supervise the identification and valuation of property-backed loans on the books of qualifying financial institutions in Ireland, but will delegate the purchase and management of these loans to a separately created special purpose vehicle. Master Special Purpose Vehicle In a letter from the Central Statistics Office of Ireland to Eurostat, dated September 22, 2009, Details are provided on the suggested creation by NAMA of a master special purpose vehicle known as National Asset Management Limited and controlled by the holding company National Asset Management Agency Investment Limited. The CSO sought guidance from Eurostat on how NAMA and the SPV would be classified in national accounts. NAMA will arrange and supervise the identification and valuation of property-backed loans on the books of qualifying financial institutions in Ireland, but the purchase and management of these loans will be the responsibility of the SPV. The SPV will have a majority of private equity. It will fund the purchase of the loan books from financial institutions by issuing securities, most of which will be backed by a guarantee from the Irish government. According to the details provided to Eurostat, 
the Master SPV would be a separate legal entity and would be jointly owned by private investors, who would own 51% of its equity and therefore have the majority vote, and by NAMA, which would hold the remaining 49%. The subscribed capital of the master SPV would be a 100M. Although the SPV would have its own board, NAMA will retain a veto over all decisions of the board that could affect the interests of NAMA or of the Irish government. The master SPV would be run with the objective of making a profit on the purchase and management of the assets it purchases. The private investors in the master SPV would be entitled to the following economic return. The equity investors will receive an annual dividend linked to the performance of the master SPV. On winding up of the master SPV, the equity investors would only be repaid their capital if the master SPV has the resources. They would receive a further equity bonus of 10% of the capital if the master SPV makes a profit. All other profits and gains of the master SPV would accrue to NAMA. Former Finance Minister the late Brian Lenian believes that pension funds could be the most appropriate investors in the SPV. The annual dividend, should one be paid, is to be capped at the 10-year Irish government bond yield at the time the dividend is declared. Lenian says he is confident that the A51M can be found from suitable investors, because of the similarity of the SPV investment to a government bond. In its analysis the Central Statistics Office requested that NAMA be classified as a government entity and the master SPV as a financial institution. The likely impact of this classification could be that the debt issued by the SPV, guaranteed by the Irish government, would not be classified as part of the national debt of Ireland by Eurostat. In a letter dated October 16, 2009, Eurostat gave a preliminary view. The letter stated that NAMA is to be treated as part of the government sector, the type of assets to be purchased cannot be expanded without approval of the European Commission, that it be a temporary scheme and that the size of potential losses be small relative to the total liabilities. Eurostat noted that the Minister for Finance will examine at the end of 2012 whether NAMA has met its objectives and decide if its continuation is justified. It suggested that a rather detailed analysis has to be carried out, especially of the guarantee arrangements. It made no judgment on the draft NAMA business plan but stated that the presence of market investors is reassuring to it. Their preliminary conclusion is that the master SPV may be classified as a financial corporation. However, this is a preliminary view and subject to revision. NAMA's private investors, the three investors owning 51% of the SPV were revealed by the Minister of Finance in April 2010, and in NAMA's June 2010 business plan, Irish Life Investment Managers, a part of Irish Life and Permanent. New Ireland Assurance, a part of Bank of Ireland. Clients of Allied Irish Banks Investment Managers, a part of Allied Irish Banks each provided a 17M for a total of a 51M of NAMA's initial capital of a 100M. NAMA then geared up way above typical EU banking limits, taking on debt 35 times its paid-up capital. The reason given for this is that the loans are temporary. Have bought other loans at a discount. Will be repaid on property sales. And are subject to continuous review. They are similar in function to bridging loans. The purpose of NAMA's quasi-independent legal status is to remove its debts from general Irish government debt. This is the position of the government, the International Monetary Fund and Eurostat. But, as the three private investors are bank-run pension fund managers, whose parent or major shareholder companies had been all but nationalised by 2011, and as the 2010 Credit Institutions Act allows the government powers to apply to the courts to restructure any financial body in any way in secret at any time, and as a general guarantee to protect the parent banks remains in place, the international rating agencies consider NAMA's debts to be a part of Irish government debt. Besides, NAMA's directors on the SPV board will maintain a veto over all decisions of the board that could affect the interests of NAMA or of the Irish government. Equal sale of AIB in Irish Life Investment Managers stakes equals, following the acquisition of allied Irish banks by the Irish government the SPV stakeholding was sold to South African investor Prestige. In April 2012, 
the stakeholding in the SPV belonging to Irish Life Investment Managers was sold on the order of the Minister for Finance, Michael Noonan, to an undisclosed investor. These sales are necessitated by each nationalisation raising the government's stake from a minority 49% to a majority to 66%. Timetable the National Treasury Management Agency published details on NAMA in a press release dated April 8, 2009. The draft bill was published on July 30, 2009 for public consultation. Following the consultation process, the National Asset Management Agency Bill 2009 was published on September 10, 2009. The bill was debated in the Irish Parliament, and passed on October 15, 2009 by 77 votes to 73. The committee stage of the bill started on October 22, 2009. Following the passing of the bill in both houses of the OA reactors, the President, Mary McAleese decided to sign the bill into law on November 22, 2009, despite calls from the Labour Party to seek advice from the Council of State regarding its constitutionality. Defining long-term economic value, the assets will be taken on at a discount, referred to as a haircut, estimated at about 30% of book value, and in exchange the banks will be given bonds to sell to raise cash. The 30% discount to the A77BN book value outlined by NAMA includes circa a 9BN of unpaid interest. The current value of the assets will not be based on their estimated market value, but on a higher notional long-term economic value. This higher value is ultimately based on the share prices of Irish banks, which were low in March 2009 but have risen since. Critics say that this is a circular argument. Were the expected discount 50% or more, the bank's share prices would have collapsed. In early September 2009 Minister Lenin pointed to this rise in share prices as positive news colon. Markets have assessed that information in the context of their current share price and rating agencies have used it in their assessment of these institutions. Should an independent NAMA valuation be too low, Lunahan said, I can give directions to NAMA to have a valuation reconsidered. In addition, critics also pointed out that the use of the term, often capitalized, long-term economic value which was popular in the press around the time of the establishment of NAMA, often as the acronym LTEV, gave the impression that it was a well-known or accepted term in economics. It was pointed out that, in fact, the acronym did not appear on any Internet page before 2009, with the full term appearing only shortly before, with the concept of LTEV being invented primarily to give political cover for paying from taxpayers' funds, a price in excess of the market value of assets. Problems relating to paying the notional long-term economic value for the loans to be transferred to NAMA were highlighted by the difficulties of Liam Carroll's Zoe Developments. In July 2009, Zoe Developments, a large property development company, made an application to court seeking the appointment of an examiner. The appointment of an examiner would have allowed it protection from its creditors. Zoe Developments was estimated to have a 1.2 BN of loans with a likely deficit of a 900 M in a liquidation scenario. The A1.2 BN of loans included debts of a 489 M to AIB and a 113 M to Bank of Ireland. In addition to Zoe Developments, Carroll's overall liabilities, including other businesses are estimated to total a 2.8 BN on September 10, 2009. The High Court refused to appoint an examiner to Zoe Developments despite the support of AIB and Bank of Ireland for such an appointment. Receivers have been appointed, after a Supreme Court appeal failed. A deficit of a 900M versus loans of a 1.2BN if realised would imply a market value of 25% of loan value for Zoe Developments. On September 9, 2009, Philip Lane of Trinity College Dublin published a paper on estimating long-term economic value. Using economic theory and formulae, Lane describes the long-term economic value being a function of both nominal price levels and the real economic value of property. The real economic value of property is further defined as a function of numerous factors including, but not limited to, real disposable income per capita. The level of long-term interest rates. The size of the population, and the demographic structure of the population. 
on implementation of long-term economic value, Lane highlights the concerns over price levels. In particular, given the debate on domestic competitiveness versus other countries, Ireland may experience real exchange rate depreciation, which could have a drag effect of nominal property value. He said, it is important that the NAMA process to recognize the inevitability of such uncertainty in the determining of long-term economic values. As a result, he favors a two-part payment system. In his speech to the Dáil on September 16, 2009, the Minister of Finance Brian Lenehan indicated that alternatives to NAMA that did not use long-term economic value would lead to the need for fresh equity to be injected by the government into the financial sector of between a 4 and 7 billion. Coincidentally, the upper end of this figures is equal to the difference between the A54 billion estimated long-term economic value, and the A47 billion current market value. Lenahan noted that the additional of 4 to 7 billion would be an incremental investment in the banks rather than a higher payment for the loans. Academic and political criticism, the proposed agency has been the subject of major criticism in both politics and academia. Fine Gael Enterprise, Trade and Employment spokesperson, Leo Varadkar, said of NAMA, Fianna Fáil and Government Minister, Willie O'Dea and Peter Bacon, the architect of NAMA, both accept that this is a massive gamble. Taxpayers are right to ask why Fianna Fáil is so keen to gamble with their money without asking the banks, bondholders and institutional investors to take their fair share of the pain. In dealing with the banking crisis, the objective must be to minimize the risk to taxpayers and to get credit flowing to businesses and home buyers. NAMA achieves neither of these objectives. It won't get credit flowing and it exposes taxpayers to all of the risk. Fine Gael instead proposed a national recovery bank. Labour Party Enterprise spokesperson and former finance minister Rue Eric Wynne accused the government of proposing to establish the biggest property company in the world and asking taxpayers to foot the bill and bear all the risk. He stated that this bill will be one of the most important pieces of legislation ever to have come before Dáil Arian. There will be enormous consequences for the taxpayer if the government get it wrong. Labour instead has proposed the temporary nationalisation of the banks. A commentary signed by leading academics also questioned the NAMA strategy. They wrote in the Irish Times that they saw, the criticisms are disputed by the government. The Tar Naist and Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Employment Mary Coughlin has defended the creation of the agency saying it was not a bailout for the banks, one of the charges made against it. On October 7, 2009, Professor Joseph Stiglitz, winner of the Nobel Prize in Economics and former chief economist of the World Bank, speaking at Trinity College Dublin criticized NAMA. He said, countries which allow banks to go under by following the ordinary rules of capitalism have done fine. The US has let 100 banks go this year alone, as did Sweden and Norway in their crises as well as commenting that in Ireland, this bank bailout is a simple transfer from taxpayers to bondholders, and it will saddle generations to come. The only thing that might give you solace is that, as chief economist of the World Bank, we see this type of thing happening in banana republics all over the world. Whenever a banking crisis happens, the financial sector uses the turmoil as a mechanism to transfer wealth from the general population to themselves. EO Euro unregistered trademark may been very disappointed to see that it has happened, not only in banana republics, but in advanced industrialized countries. On October 21, 2009, ahead of the International Financial Services Summit in Dublin on November 5, 2009, two leading economists expressed caution on NAMA. Professor Nouriel Roubini, professor at New York University Stern School of Business said that. It is essential that the bad assets are taken off the balance sheets of the financial institutions and that the government separates the good assets from the bad assets to clean up the financial system, but if it does it in such a way that implies it is buying these assets at overpriced prices that does not reflect the underlying value, then it is giving a big subsidy to the bank shareholders and the unsecured creditors. Professor Willem Butter Professor of Political Economy at the London School of Economics and former member of the UK Monetary Policy Committee, said, the Irish government should have, in principle, gone for a good bank, 
not a bad bank, the bad bank is always a bad idea because it means that the government underwrites all the creditors and creates moral hazard. Other participants at the IFSS include Martin Wolf, Chief Economics Commentator, Financial Times and Philip Lane, Professor of International Macroeconomics at Trinity College Dublin. In February 2010 Brian Cowan defended his claim that the NAMA will increase the supply of credit into the economy despite the International Monetary Fund saying it would not lead to any significant increase. People should contemplate what level of credit accessibility we Euro unregistered trademark D have in this economy without NAMA, he said. Eat a Euro unregistered trademark S not just sufficient in itself obviously for credit flow. Eta Euro unregistered trademark is certainly an important and necessary part of restructuring our banking system, of that theory a Euro unregistered trademark is no doubt, in terms of improving as a location for funding of banking operations, said Mr. Cowan. He previously said that the government a Euro unregistered trademark is objective in restructuring the banks through NAMA was to generate more access to credit for Irish business at this critical time. In September 2009, Lena Hen expressed a similar view, saying it would lead to more lending for business and households. Cowan was responding to reports published on February 8 that the IMF had told Lena Hen in April 2009 that the NAMA would not lead to a significant increase in lending by the banks. The comments, which appear in internal Department of Finance documents released under the Freedom of Information Act, were made by senior IMF official Stephen Selig who will join the board of NAMA in May 2010. Minutes of a private meeting at the department between Brian Lenin and IMF officials on April 29, 2009 last state that the IMF do not believe that NAMA will result in significant increase in bank lending in Ireland. The government has maintained that NAMA's purchase of bad loans from the banks with state bonds would increase the flow of credit in the economy since the plan was unveiled April 2009. Speaking at the publication of the NAMA legislation in September 2009, Mr. Lenin said it would strengthen and improve the funding positions of the banks so that they can lend to viable businesses and households. The IMF estimated in their published report the domestic banks would face losses of up to a 35 billion, though the department pointed out this would be partly funded from operating profits and provisions already taken against some loan losses. Supplementary Data and Draft Business Plan On September 16, 2009, NAMA published supplementary data document that contained high-level statistic on NAMA, data on property yields and information on the six covered institutions. The supplemental data indicate the book value of the loans expected to be transferred to NAMA by the six covered institutions is currently a 68 bn. The suggested transfer value is a 54 bn, with the estimated market value at a 47 bn. In addition to the supplementary data document, the Department of Finance published incremental data on October 13, 2009 and a draft NAMA business plan. Within the supplementary data document there is data on the financial ratios of the six covered banks. Adding up the Tier 1 capital of the six covered institutions, as reported in the supplemental data document leads to total Tier 1 capital of a 29 bn. This compares to combined risk-weighted assets of a 363 bn and a Tier 1 capital ratio of 7.9%. Basel II recommends a minimum ratio of 4% capital requirement. According to the supplementary data document, the long-term economic value of the loans to be transfers to NAMA is estimated to be 15% higher than the market value. NAMA applies statutory adjustment factors to estimate the valuation of a 54 bn. The document also notes that asset prices would need to increase from current market values by 10%, for the government and taxpayers to avoid any loss, taking into account subordinated debt. The difference between the 15% uplift to get to a 54 bn and the need for a 10% uplift for the taxpayer to avoid a loss, is explained in the draft NAMA business plan. This analysis takes into account the expected part payment in subordinate debt to the six covered institutions of a 2.7 bn. This subordinated debt holders may receive none of the proceeds in a scenario where the taxpayers are exposed to a loss. Equals market response equals, on Thursday 17 September 2009, 
the day after the estimated cost of NAMA was announced, shares in AIB and Bank of Ireland rose in value. On the ISEQ index, shares in AIB rose by 30% and shares in Bank of Ireland rose by 17%. Shares for both banks were also up on the U.S. stock markets. Equals analysis of the data equals, based on the information presented in the supplementary data document, if the A68BN book value is transferred at a 54BN to NAMA, the covered institutions could be a write-down of both their Tier 1 capital and risk-weighted assets of a 14BN in aggregate. Assuming a 1-for-1 write-down of a 14BN in the risk-weighted assets and the same of the Tier 1 capital, the new ratio would be 4.2% with risk-weighted assets of a 349BN and Tier 1 capital of a 15BN. Assuming the transfer value is at the market value estimate of a 47BN, not a 54BN, then Tier 1 capital could fall by a 21BN not a 14BN. Risk-weighted assets could be a 342BN and Tier 1 capital a 8BN, with a ratio of 2.2%. However, this analysis looks at the aggregate data provided in the supplemental data document. For a clearer picture, NAMA would need to give a breakdown of the loans to be transferred, by institution, as well as the book value and market value of each. Some additional information was provided on October 13, 2009 in the draft NAMA business plan, indicates that the six covered institutions have taken a 7BN of provisions in the last year against loan impairments and giving the split of the A77BN of prospective loans for transfer to NAMA. However, the data point of the current net book value of the loan portfolios and the prospective transfer price for the portfolios by each of the six covered institutions was omitted. Equals transfer of derivatives portfolio to NAMA equals, in addition to the potential loan book transfer to NAMA, the draft NAMA business plan outlined the existence of over 1,000 derivative positions attached to the commercial loans. These loans are expected to transfer to NAMA as well. The nominal value of this derivative portfolio is a 14.7 billion. Developers and other borrowers in real estate transactions are often required by lenders to enter into derivative transactions as part of a loan agreement, as a mechanism to fix the interest rate on the loan. Typically, interest rate swap agreements are used. If interest rates fall, the borrower does not benefit, as he she must pay the saving to the counterparty of the swap agreement. Given the decline in interest rates over the last two years, there may be a significant liability relating to the A14.7BN derivative portfolio. The draft NAMA business plan does not elaborate on the magnitude of this liability, however, it states, these derivatives change the interest rate structure of the underlying loans and their mark-to-market value will be incorporated into the valuation of the loans. Equals post-transfer equals the information provided in the supplementary data document also includes analysis of the total loan books of the covered institutions. In particular it identifies, a 27BN of watch loans, a 31BN of vulnerable loans and a 29BN of impaired loans. That is a total of 86BN of loans, at net book value. This is in excess of the loans expected to be transferred to NAMA. Following the potential transfer of loans with a book value of a 68BN to NAMA, the six covered institutions would still have an aggregate of an 18BN of loans that are watch loans, vulnerable, and or impaired. This exceeds the A15BN of Tier 1 capital within the six banks, after the NAMA transfer. The draft NAMA business plan indicated that the potential loans for transfer to NAMA of a 77BN book value is divided into a 24.1 billion from AIB, a 28.4 billion from Anglo-Irish Bank, a 15.5 billion from Bank of Ireland, a 0.8 billion from EBS, and an 8.3 billion from Irish Nationwide. The document states that about 40% of the loans are estimated to be cash generating. This indicates that if 46 billion of the loans are not paying interest. Of the A31 billion that are cash generating, there is no indication in the document if they are paying the full requirements under the terms of the loan agreements. The A31 billion is divided into a 28 billion of commercial loans and a 3 billion of land and development loans. 
This compares to a breakdown of the A77 billion of a 28 billion of commercial loans, a 21 billion of land and development loans, and a 28 billion of associated loans. Additional data on the size of the underlying loans are also provided in the draft business plan. Of particular note is that the 10 largest underlying loans have a projected book value of a 16 billion, with an average loan size of a 1.6 billion each. The top 100 underlying loans total a 38 billion, equivalent to 49% of the overall. In July 2010 after the A revised business plan was published it was revealed that it is now predicting a possible profit of a 1 BN, with the possibility of losses of up to a 800 M, after an initially projection of more than a full BN in profit. The plan published today updates and revises the interim business plan published in October of last year which was prepared on the basis of information supplied at that time by the five participating institutions and in advance of the detailed examination of any of the key loans by NAMA. Finance Minister Brian Leenan has denied that the government got its sums wrong on NAMA. The original business plan estimated a profit of a 4.8 BN based on a rise in assets value of 10%. Today's revised figures say that if they recover the full value of the loans plus 10% it will result in a profit of a 3.9 BN. NAMA Chairman Frank Daly said the plan confirmed that the five institutions covered by NAMA had not disclosed or had been unaware of the extent of the financial crisis afflicting their borrowers. He said the banks had shown remarkable generosity towards their borrowers, adding that NAMA had no intention of maintaining that approach. To say the least we are extremely disappointed and disturbed to find that, only months after being led to believe that 40% of loans were income producing, the real figure is actually 25%. Equals raising new equity capital equals, if there are further substantial write-downs within the Irish banking industry post NAMA this could lead to further financial difficulties. Patrick Hanoan, a professor of international financial economics and development at Trinity College Dublin, and shortly afterwards to be appointed head of the Central Bank of Ireland, stated on July 21, 2009 that unless the loans are valued at unrealistically high prices, the NAMA process will leave the banks with insufficient capital. This is especially true considering the additional loan losses in non-property lending that are inevitable given the depth of the recession and which will have to be provided for. Professor Hanohan was appointed Governor of the Central Bank of Ireland and Financial Services Authority by the Minister of Finance in late September 2009. On October 5, 2009, the Irish Independent reported that European banks need to raise substantial equity capital, including AIB and BOI. The article quoted a report by the bank JP Morgan which estimates that the AIB and BOI need to raise a combined 11 BN a 7 BN for AIB and a 4 BN for BOI. On October 8, 2009, Brian Lenehan Minister of Finance said that even after selling real estate loans to the government's NAMA, that the country's biggest banks may need further money. Additional funding from the Irish government was highlighted, with Lenehan recognising that it would be difficult to raise funds on the stock market. On October 10, 2009, the Irish Times reported that Bank of Ireland and AIB could need to raise a combined a 9 BN as a result of write-downs associated with the transfer of assets to NAMA. The article quotes a Merian Capital report that estimates that AIB and BOI's equity tier 1 capital ratios would fall to 3.3% and 3.5% in 2010 November. In the draft NAMA business plan published on October 13, 2009, it states that, after the transfer of their L&D and associated loans to NAMA, it is likely that some institutions will require additional capital in order to absorb the consequent write-downs on the book value of their assets. The government has indicated that it expects institutions to seek private sector capital in the first place but to the extent that sufficient capital cannot be raised independently or generated internally. It remains committed to providing institutions with an appropriate level of capital to continue to meet their requirement. Equals capital from a debt for equity swap equals, the August 2009 open letter by 46 academics reported in the Irish Times, suggests that the government is in a strong position, if it chooses, to negotiate with bondholders to engage in some debt for equity swaps. 
The information provided in the supplementary data document shows an aggregate of a 20 BN of subordinate debt at the six covered institutions. Assuming all or part of this subordinate debt is converted into equity could play a role in improving the tier 1 ratio of the industry. The concept of subordinated debt holders receiving no return on their loans, is raised in the draft NAMA business plan, where the subordinated debt issued to the covered institutions, could receive nothing in a scenario where the Irish taxpayer incurs a loss on its investment in NAMA. 5% of the A54 billion purchase price is forecast to be paid in subordinated loans. Equals the draft business plan equals, the draft business plan assumed a life of 11 years for NAMA from 2010 to 2020 with full repayment of the A54 billion loans issued by NAMA Irish government by the end of 2020. Cumulative interest on the loans is forecast at a 16 billion, using the Ford swap rate for the euro. Given a percentage of the loans are cash generative this a 16 billion may be partially offset by an estimated a 12 billion of interest received. The draft business plan expects a default rate of 20% on the A77 billion of principal, and repayment of a 62 billion. The A15 billion of defaulted loans is forecast to be sold for a 4 billion. Fees and running costs of NAMA are estimated at a 240M per annum that is circa a 3 billion over 11 years. Taking all of these cash flows together leads to a cumulative positive cash flow of a 5 billion. The draft business plan looks at sensitivity analysis, indicating that if short and or long-term interest rates rise, there would be an erosion of the A5 billion positive cash flow to NAMA. Similarly, if the default rate increases, this cash flow would be eroded. The document states that an increase of the default rate to 31% would erode and full the net present value of the positive cash flow. The draft business plan does not attempt to match the A62 billion of principal repayments and a 4 billion of asset recovery to the A54 billion long-term economic value expected to be paid for the NAMA loan portfolio. Nor is there any analysis comparing the forecast to 15 billion of defaults relative to the estimates 60% of loans that is a 46 billion, that are not cash generative. A part of the draft business plan that is mentioned but not modelled in the document, is the ability of the NAMA to borrow an incremental of 5 billion to pursue its asset development enhancement objectives. In particular, NAMA may invest in projects that are deemed commercially viable. NAMA shall inherit with the loans, and drawn commitments of a 6.5 billion to the borrowers, Risk sharing the ex post levy. On May 6, 2009, Professor Hanan presented his views on NAMA to a committee of the Irish Parliament. In particular, he raised the idea of a two part payment to the banks, part debt and part equity, as a mechanism to reduce the risk to the taxpayer of overpaying for the loans. He specifically identified this mechanism as being superior to an ex post levy on the banks. An additional advantage of paying part equity for the loans, that Professor Hanan mentions in his paper of May 6, 2009, is the benefit of having some private shareholders within NAMA, given the extensive international evidence showing that government owned banking systems serve their economies poorly. On October 9, 2009, the two parties of the Irish government, Fianna Fáil and the Green Party, agreed a renewed programme for government. In this agreement, it states should NAMA make a loss over time, a levy would be imposed to recoup the cost to taxpayers. This proposal is not in line with the preferred option that Professor Hanan highlighted in May 2009. In the letter from Eurostat to the CSO dated October 16, 2009, it is noted that in addition to the 5% of the purchase price paid in subordinate bonds, that reduces the potential losses of the Irish taxpayer, that an amendment to the legislation that shall be introduced means that the participating banks shall have to pay a tax surcharge on their operating profits until the loss of the master SPV, related to NAMA, is recouped. Operations in 2010 November, NAMA published its 2010 accounts and summarized its more recent achievements in July 2011. In round figures it had acquired loans of a 72 billion for a 30 billion. To buy these it had issued bonds worth a 30 billion that buyers could sell to the European Central Bank. 
the bank's losses of a 42 billion written off on these sales, and their other losses, were met by Irish government cash or loans that were advanced or ultimately guaranteed by the ECB. A 3.9 billion worth of sales both in and outside Ireland had been approved by NAMA in a difficult market, given the late 2000s recession. In that the main purpose of NAMA was to remove bad debts from the six banks and to recapitalize them, it was hard to see how it had made a difference in the short term. The plan relied upon an early worldwide recovery from recession, which did not occur. Government support for the banks continued separately from NAMA and had risen to 32% of GDP by September 2010. In turn, the government support for NAMA itself was quantified in July 2010 by the IMF as more than 25% of GDP in 2010. The financial markets concluded that Ireland could not support the cost of the banks as well as NAMA, and run a budget deficit, and they sold Irish bonds at the time of the renewal of the two-year state bank guarantee in September 2010, causing yields to rise. It became impossible for the government itself to borrow from the bond markets. The drop in value of Irish bonds also had an immediate effect on the balance sheets of Irish and foreign banks' capital requirements. As a result, in November 2010 the Irish government was itself obliged to seek a 67 billion net bailout from the ECB and IMF and undertook in return that the sale of the six banks' remaining assets outside NAMA would be expedited. Part of the money was to cover future losses incurred by buyers of those assets. By early 2011 the six banks' liquidity needs were being supported by a further a 150 billion from the ECB. Despite all the efforts to save them, in April 2011 the six banks' credit ratings were reduced to junk status by Moody's. Recent developments, in February 2011, the Supreme Court delivered judgment in an appeal taken by Paddy McKillen against a purported decision to acquire loans taken out by Mr. McKillen and companies controlled by him. The court found that the decision had been taken by a group of senior managers before NAMA had been formed and accordingly there was no decision of NAMA to acquire the loans. In April 2011 NAMA announced that it will commence selling home mortgages to private investors on the basis that the investor pays equity of 30% of the asking price of the loan, with NAMA providing financing for the balance. Equal status as a public authority equals in September 2011 the Irish Office of the Commissioner for Environmental Information determined that, in regard to those seeking information on the environmental impact aspects of properties controlled by NAMA, NAMA is defined as a public authority under the relevant regulations, and is obliged to answer access to information on the environment requests from applicants. NAMA disagreed with this decision and appealed to the High Court on a point of law. In February 2013 High Court Judge Comac Wachade ruled in favor of the Commissioner for Environmental Information. The case centered on the statutory interpretation of the term, and includes in Irish law. The case cost a total of a 121,350 to the Irish taxpayer up to that point. NAMA appealed the High Court's decision to the Supreme Court and the case was first heard on April 7, 2014 before Chief Justice Susan Denham, Mr. Justice Murray, Mr. Justice Hardiman, Mr. Justice O'Donnell and Ms. Justice Dunn. Equals Joergen Review equals, in December 2011 the agency published the Joergen Review, a report on NAMA's functional organization, skills and delegation arrangements produced by the former group chief executive of HSBC Holdings plc, Michael Joergen. The review includes a number of non-binding recommendations for the agency's board, including the need to be more entrepreneurial in focus and proposing a greater delegation of authorities from the board to the executive. In February 2012, Paddy McKillen has won the latest hearing on a preliminary issue in his UK legal battle with the Barclay Brothers for control of the Five Star Mayburn Hotel Group in London. The latest ruling strengthens his case against the Barclays to argue that Ireland a Euro unregistered trademark as National Asset Management Agency unlawfully transferred 800 million of debt on the hotels to the brothers last September. Equals NAMA to nature equals, 
In March 2012 a group called NAMA to Nature began planting trees on NAMA sites in a symbolic protest against the failure of the government agency to address the enduring presence of ghost estates and the failure of developers to clear unfinished construction sites. This action was reported in the journal EA. It was also reported in the Irish Times. Two of the participants were interviewed on the John Murray radio show. Equals Northern Ireland loan sale equals, in early April 2014, NAMA sold a portfolio of Northern Ireland loans for a £4.5 billion. The deal brokered was NAMA's single biggest transaction to date and followed an extensive sales process involving bidders from both the USA and Europe. The loan book included a portfolio of various commercial properties in the north. It was reported to have been initially acquired by NAMA for a £1 billion. See also, post-2008 Irish banking crisis, Irish emergency budget, 2009, National Treasury Management Agency, toxic asset, European sovereign debt crisis, list of acronyms. References. External links, official website, National Asset Management.